I think I missed the Hogwarts Express. I think I have a flying car outside. That worked out really well for Ron and Harry, right? Right, I'll get onto that, because it's time for Back to Hogwarts. Hey guys, I hope you're all having an amazing, amazing day today. Whether you are a new or returning friend, welcome. My name is Katie, and this is Over the Moody. Yay! This is a lot of energy because I'm so excited, you guys. I'm so excited. You wanted more. We bring it. Miss Cherry's channel, my lovely, lovely friend Jessie. If you are somehow not familiar with Jessie, I don't know where you've been living, under what rock you've just crawled out from, but my wonderful friend Jessie and I have been doing this great crafted challenge um, over the past couple months, which I have just been having an absolute blast doing. Can I tell you, I'm so happy that you guys enjoy them because I love doing them and I have been having so much fun. I feel like I've been put it, getting pushed out of my um, creative comfort zone a little bit because I don't want to be too repetitive with you guys with what I'm creating. So I think that that has made things really, really fun for me. We have a Back to Hogwarts crafted challenge today and it is perfect because Jessie is a Gryffindor and I am quite obviously a Slytherin. So it is the ultimate battle of houses. Gryffindor versus Slytherin. Slytherin versus Gryffindor. Who will win? It's not really a contest, but, um, I mean, I'm just saying. Where are my other Slytherins at? Let me know in the comments down below. If you are team Slytherin, I hope that you are, because Slytherin people are my people, and I love fellow Slytherins. So, hi, fellow Slytherins! <laughs> um, anyway, so, this happened, like, really fast. Jessie and I were just messaging back and forth one day and she was like, oh my gosh, we should totally do a Harry Potter video together. And then she was like, wait, what if we did like a back to Hogwarts challenge? And I was like, oh man, we could. That would be amazing. We would just need to get it done super fast. And this was probably like the last week of August, like the full last full week of August, the week before Labor Day. So the turnaround on this was fast, and so I, whew, I got my brain going, but I got so excited about all of the stuff that I was getting to make for you guys. So we did decide to do four crafts, which is crazy town, right? Uh, so we talked, and we decided that the crafts that we were going to do are as follows. We had to do a craft that was inspired by our favorite class at Hogwarts. We had to do a craft related to the pet that we would be bringing to Hogwarts because you do get your choice of pets that you can bring with you. We had to create our own wand because you cannot go to Hogwarts if you don't have a wand, right? And then we did have to make a wearable that was inspired by our house. And so as soon as we got those done, my mind was just off and going and like, what am I gonna possibly make? So I think that weekend I was like, boom, we're going. It has just been like, this has been a great way for Jesse and I to even grow our friendship. Um, and I've gotten to know her so much more through this process. And I've really enjoyed that aspect of this challenge too. It's just been so, so fun. So anyway, enough of my rambling. We need to get crafting because we have crafts to finish and I have crafts to show you. So let's get started. Okay, so we are going to get started on our project for our favorite class. And as lame as it is with all of the super cool options that we have for classes, I am actually just going with astronomy. I have always really liked anything that's um, celestial, so I figured that this would be appropriate for me to do. So I also thought that a reasonable homework assignment would be for people to kind of chart constellations just to have as maybe like a study guide or a reference guide or something. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. So I have a 12 by 12 canvas here um, and then I have a couple different paints. So I have this um, folk art paint all of this stuff I got at Michael's. This is in the color Midnight. So this is going to be my base. And then I'm actually gonna go over top of that with this. And so this is a, another folk art paint. This is a Dragonfly Glaze in the red, violet, 
blue shift color. So they had this actually kind of on display, um, how the finish looked and it looks so cool. So I'm hoping that this is going to look as neat as it did on the um, sample thing that they had displayed. And then I also got myself some silver gilding paint. So I'm going to paint my base with these and then I'm going to use this to do the different constellations. Let's get started. Okay, so for my finished product for my class project, things went a little bit differently because what I originally thought was going to work out did not work out. So here's a fun fact. Sir, the gilding paint that I was going to use, that silver, silver gilding paint, is incredibly thin and very runny. So it did not work well on my canvas. It pretty much like soaked in and bled all over the place and my lines were not like very fine. They just, it was not coming out how I wanted it to. So then I was going to try with white paint, with just white acrylic paint, which should come out fine. There is something on here that I did do with paint. I don't know which one it was, but um, there is something I did do with paint. And then I started to just go in a different direction as to what I wanted to do design wise. But then I found I had little jelly roller pens, um, or at least one jelly roller pen in my little case where I keep all of my micron markers. And it was a white jelly roller pen and a white paint marker, which perfect. So I didn't know if that was going to work on my canvas, but it did. So that's what I ended up finishing out my project with was with my little jelly roller pen and my paint marker. So I was very, very happy to come across those because I was getting incredibly frustrated that things were not coming out as well as I wanted them to. I am like kind of obsessed with this and I know that it's not perfect. I know that. But nevertheless, I think that this came out beautifully. This is my finished product. So I did end up like, A, can we just talk about like just the shift on the paint on this? Oh my God. I don't know if it's coming across as beautiful in person or on the camera as it is in person, but if you can get your hands on some of the, these paints, like legit game changers. Um, I just love like, this is the perfect way to encapsulate is that a word? <laughs> to capture space. Like it just has all of the depth and the colors. Like it's purple, it's blue, it's everything. And I am obsessed with it. So I ended up finding, actually I was on Pinterest just looking at like doodles of space because I was like, whatever, at least I can just do like some space icons or something on here. So that's kind of what I have going on here. Um, my moon is not great. Sorry, this is going to keep shifting. <laughs> My moon isn't great, but it's fine. Um, so I have a moon, a star, the sun, and Saturn down here. And then all over here, I drew in constellations. So I did just look up like doodles of constellations because I found that those were a little bit easier for me to replicate. I did also, I don't know if you can even tell, but I stippled in stars. Like I just dotted all over this thing um, with my jelly roller pen. So that it looked like there were stars all over the place. Yeah, I'm just really, really happy with how this came out. I just think it's so pretty. Alright, so today we are going to be working on our animal that we are taking with us to Hogwarts. And it should probably come as no surprise to any of you that I am deciding to take a cat. So I got myself some super squishy yarn. I have a, if I can pick it up, a size h hook here and we are going to make a cat so i found a pattern that i liked i'm going to make an attempt i'm generally not very good at making amigurumi um which is basically a crochet stuffed animal but uh yeah we're gonna try My cat is finished. 
first. Are you ready? This is my little kitty. <sighs> oh, I love her so much. I think she's so precious. So, so cute. So I will leave a link to the pattern that I followed down below. So here are all of the paws are sewed on on the bottom. Um, and then her little tail kind of just wraps around the back. I did sew it to the side of her body so that it would wrap and it wouldn't just, you know, stick out the back here. But, oh my gosh, I just think that it came out so cute. So I do think that this is a girl cat and I'm struggling, guys, to come up with a name. So I need your help. Let me know what you guys think that I should name this little kitty cat. I think she's so cute. All right, so I just left Michael's and picked up a couple things for my wand. So this called to me. Um, I kind of like that it like, has like a handle and like <laughs> a grip. It reminds me a little bit of Voldemort's wand. It's that he has like the bone situation coming. So this, both of these I actually found in the seasonal section, but where the wreath supplies are. So I really liked this. I thought that this was interesting to me. So. This is actually with the Christmas stuff. It's, I guess, supposed to be an antler, I would imagine. So I'm going to use this as my base. I'm going to use these as my decoration. So I'm going to, I think what I wanna do is like line right here, like right on the top of the antler with some of these skulls. So there's two big ones and a couple small ones. So I think I will use those and then just maybe use some of the wire and these beads as like texture. And then I'm going to paint over everything to make it a little bit more cohesive, but I'm digging this. Like that just gives me some like good, some good grip for when I'm trying to cast some spells and I, you know, I'm a Slytherin guys, so I have to go a little bit evil, I think. <laughs> then for the most part, I have watched some tutorials and everything seems to just be like you can build stuff off stuff up with hot glue. Um, so that's the plan. So I'm going to use a hot glue gun to um, build everything up. You saw a little bit of my progression in my wand making. I did kind of cut it off after I painted it just the solid white color because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. After that I knew I wanted to do a little bit more paint to it so I could give it some more dimension. So <laughs> it's time for the big reveal. I'm so pleased with how it came out. This is what we have. I'll bring you guys in really close and then I'll talk about it a little bit. I did end up doing a couple different layers of paint on here. So the base was that cream color, and then I did a layer of light brown, a layer of kind of a reddish brown, and then what really set it off was just doing a layer of black. And so I did dry brush on top of the white. John showed me how to dry brush, and I used big brushes for both of the brown colors, but then a small brush and a small amount of paint for the black color and I kind of love how it looks like it was like forged in fire and it looks like a burnt marshmallow <laughs> to me that's what it reminds me of but like I'm astounded that I made this out of hot glue and what's supposed to be a reindeer antler for a wreath like I just think it looks so incredible. I'm so happy I used these skulls down here because I think that it really helped with giving me a good um, solid base uh, and a size to work with, but I just freaking love this wand so much. So I will probably never ever use it. It will only be a display piece, but oh my god, it's so, so cool. I wasn't sure how it was going to come out, but I'm really glad <laughs> that I worked with it and so 
sometimes you just gotta roll with it guys and figure it out I will say too that it's probably beneficial um, to do some dry brushing and then walk away from it for a while because I think it can be really easy to go overboard with it I wanted to add another color to this but I ended up not because it was just gonna be too much I felt but this is my wand and I love it I love it so much I'm going to be making a poncho for my house inspired wearable um, so I have these two uh, different skeins of yarn I have had these for years because I was intending on making a different Slytherin inspired um, craft but I was gonna knit that one and I have grown to like crocheting a little bit more than knitting so this works out perfectly but this is obviously <laughs> a Christmas color um, these are both from AC Moore it's just their kind of I guess generic brand of yarn this is in the color evergreen and then this one is in the color where is it gentle gray so I think these will work together quite well they are both a four medium um, this one feels a little bit rougher this one feels a little softer they are both 100% acrylic I believe yes 100% acrylic but once I am done with this it does say that you should hand wash and block so I will definitely do that before I wear it and get it ready. Um, so this one does say on the care instructions to hand wash and dry flat. This one says that you can machine wash gentle, but I probably will just hand wash both of them. So that is what we are doing for the wearable. So I'm excited to get started. So for a wearable, I could not think of anything better to do than a poncho, something to keep me nice and snugly warm during those cold Hogwarts nights. I found a perfect pattern which I will link to down below in case you're interested in replicating because I think it's really, really easy to replicate for your house. And I love how it came out. I did not get a chance to block it yet. I did not get a chance to wash it yet because I literally just got it done last night and I just... I knew it wouldn't dry in time for me to show you guys, but are we ready? Here it is. It's got my color, so I will try it on and model it for you guys a little bit. <laughs> ah, can you see? There we go. So it's open on the, oh, I'm knocking down pops, guys. Oh, God. Um, so it's open on the side here, and it's got nice stripes. It comes down to, <laughs> ah, this is so awkward. It comes down to about my, like the top of my thighs, I would say. And then it just has a really nice neckline here. I really like this a lot. It does like the, um, the pattern actually says it, it looks like and it feels like you're just wearing a blanket, which it 100% does because it's like not a lot of shape to it. It's just <laughs> basically a blanket with a hole that you can put your, your head through, which is great. Um, so yeah, I really, really like this and it's really easy. If you're not a very experienced crocheter, this is very easy. The entire thing is pretty much just half double crochet is the entire, the entire way around. Uh, I would say probably the most difficult Thing is the neckline when you do the hole for your head that's just a matter of making sure that that chain is actually straight and not twist twisted but I really am pleased with how this came out I will for sure be using this during the uh, during the fall and during the winter this would be perfect like I hate going out shopping with a jacket on so I think that this will be like my go-to thing when I'm out Christmas shopping or just shopping in general during the winter times I can just throw this on I know I'm not gonna be outside for very long and this will definitely keep me warm anyway it doesn't matter and I just really am pleased with how it came out so maybe I'll take a picture of it so that you can actually see like a full body 
I'm super duper jazzed about how this came out. Yay! Mm -hmm.